Hey everybody, uh, my name is Leah Granger and I'm one of the co-hosts of Curtain Call, which is a weekly Instagram live series featuring uh, women artists in the arts, um, both in music, dance, a variety of disciplines, as well as cultural advocates. Uh, and we are part of Fab Collab, if you've um, never heard of our initiative. Uh, Fab Collab is a new platform that uh, arose during the pandemic to sort of give um, give uh, a space for different world music artists, musicians, dancers at a time when we can't reach each other live and in person. So Curtain Call is just one of those um, avenues that we've taken to allow people to reach, hi Helena, to reach, uh, reach their audiences. Um, so I'm just going to invite our guest for today to join. Let's see here. Uh, there we go. So today on the program, we have an incredible uh, musician joining us. Her name is Annabelle Jostek. There she is. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's a beautiful day here in Toronto. It is. It's sunny and gorgeous. We've got snow. We've got sun. I'm just going to turn up my volume a little bit. Um, well, let me just introduce you. Um, so Annabelle is a Juno-nominated singer-songwriter and a multi-instrumentalist. And her musical achievements are vast. And <laughs> um, yeah, she's, uh, she sings folk, jazz, indie pop. She's composed music for dance and film, co-written with Bruce Cockburn. You were in the band The Wailing Jennies. And you have a new album coming out, String of Pearls, on March 26th. Uh, so we're going to hear about all of that. But maybe first, can you just tell me a little bit about um, how you found your way into music? I like, were you raised in a musical home? Is this something that was always a part of your life? Or did you find it later? Yeah, uh, yeah, I was raised in a musical home. I, both my parents loved music. Not They weren't professional musicians, but both of them were very involved in sort of community-based scenes uh, of folk music in the 50s and 60s. And then, you know, I, I was born into that. Uh, we had, you know, these fantastic music parties where, uh, you know, everyone would be playing and singing songs. Uh, my, my mom had a huge canon of folk songs she drew from and my dad as well including Slovak songs and uh yeah we had it was like really very rich did you think of, of did you think of music as something that was going to be your career from a young age um I I mean I was doing it then <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I was in a, I was also in the Canadian Children's Opera Chorus so we were doing things in theaters with audiences and uh um, so I was sort of doing it already in, in some ways. And um, uh, I, I didn't know, really. I, I guess in my teens, I started writing songs. And that's when I, you know, that sort of clicked into place. Uh, I remember going to folk, some folk festivals and thinking like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> that's funny. I grew up going to folk to like, I'm from Vancouver to the Vancouver Folk Festival. Yeah. And I always remember it being like my favorite weekend of the year just like the vibe and but I, I yeah it wasn't like I was never like oh and this is what I'll do like it didn't come till later so it's lucky that you at a young age were kind of like this is amazing I want to do this yeah, yeah so then what happened did you uh, you moved to Montreal is that right yeah, yeah I moved to Montreal um in the 90s uh, I went there to you know go to Concordia University studying interdisciplinary fine arts and uh, very cool. What's Mont what was Montreal like in the nineties? Oh, it was fun. Um, yeah, it was I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was you know, rent was super cheap. There were lots of artists coming, flocking there yeah. to um, just be able to do their thing, and and the vibe of the city was amazing. There was this whole kind of um, cabaret scene going on. Like I got into playing uh, at these sort of poet run events in a way mm -hmm. and um uh, you know they were there were these just uh, all these variety shows where you'd go and play a few songs and uh people would do performance art or um you know poetry or dance and uh and then there was also i got really involved in the dance scene there as well like contemporary dance 
Um, oh, I was cool. really drawn to that. And then as well, I was quite involved in a kind of a queer feminist scene that was um, also quite formative, formative and, and really fun. There was a cabaret show called uh, Le Boudoir, which happened every year for 13 years. I was there for about 10 and it was like, themed after the 1930s kind of vaudeville cabaret shows, chorus girls oh, and, so and, cool. and dance numbers. And yeah, it was really fun. So I love that. I don't know why there isn't like more of that now. There was like one show I used to go to in Kensington Market in Toronto at a place called Bread and Circus. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this place, but they had like, yeah, like a variety show. And I'm like, why is that not a thing? Like people like variety and everybody get, and you get like a little taste of everything and like, People can experiment and try things. I don't know. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it was. It's a. It's a fun way to. Yeah. And it's still there's still like more of it in Montreal. I feel like mm -hmm. I've gone back and like danced there and and stuff like that in sort of. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um. So and and while you were there, like, were you sort of like, was that a formative time for you as an artist? Like, were you experimenting with different sounds and with different uh, styles? What was that like? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I was sort of finding my voice as a songwriter. Um, I guess there was this like, you know, indie folk world happening mm -hmm. that I was really part of, um, uh, you know, informed by this like DIY Riot girl thing that was going on. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, I was I, I had a chance to explore a whole bunch of different uh, Jean was there. There was a lot going on with jazz and electronic music, and I was experimenting with with that and and learning about it too. What instruments were you playing? Um. Well, I I mean mostly guitar, but then I mm -hmm. you know there have been periods where I've like had samplers and <laughs> you know like yeah. drum machines and things all around me. Uh, I that kind of stripped down eventually to I I guess I got involved in kind of a uh, an old time country world for a while and I just started picking up the violin more and uh, um, getting into that yeah it was just easier to carry around acoustic instruments yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> I always feel bad for the guitarist in my bands because he's got like one of these big hard shell They're white pieces <laughs> and like yeah. and he beats it out. yeah it's yeah. crazy the violin is uh, yeah, the, he, I think he was always jealous of the flute Yes. <laughs> I know. Yeah. After, like a, you know, a few hundred airports, you're kind of like, why didn't I? Yeah. Why am I not a dancer? <laughs> well, costumes. I feel uh, like I always had, like, for, especially for flamenco, it's, it's not like you're wearing some small little item. You're wearing some huge ruffled skirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you get that around in your, you know, the big suitcase? So you don't get to bring anything else. Right. <laughs> your shoes are probably pretty heavy too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so and then after that like you went on to have a huge amount of success do a lot of different things with the Waylon Jennies co-writing with a lot of different people um and then into in 2015 you had a bit of of a slowdown where you kind of had to take a step back can you tell us a little bit about about how that happened and why sure well it actually started even earlier back I I had a uh, I was on tour in England and I, I had a sound check, one of those <laughs> awful things that you hear about or, you know, hope will never happen. Uh, I got a feedback blast that, um, mm -hmm. that gave me permanent tinnitus and, uh, and um, major hearing loss. Um, and then in 2015, I, I was on a, another tour <laughs> in England again. I go, go there a lot. Um, uh, I got back from that for, like, I was touring a record. I got back from that, um, was about to head off to Europe, and, and my back went out. <laughs> oh my God. Was, yeah, so I, my back went into super spasm. And then the sort of chain of events happened. I, I, I woke up one morning, and my meager hearing was completely gone in the in the left side and the tinnitus was even louder very sensitive hyperacusis going on and um and then and then my hands stopped working like all this stuff happened so I was yeah. kind of, um I don't know yeah I, I wondered if I would be able to 
keep going with uh, music and um so it was but it was you know this moment of my body going okay you gotta slow down here <laughs> this conquest of territory that is touring is like not working um you know time to time to chill out and and reassess so i had a long period of of that where i it was actually an opportunity to really connect with my community here in toronto in a in a beautiful way that i that that is nurturing and um mm -hmm really feeds me in a, in a big way so that so up until then were you kind of spending a lot of time on the road yeah it was yeah um yeah it was um, it, my, my life find that, like difficult or like do you like enjoy it like what is touring like to, for you yeah i mean both right it's it's yeah it's a mix it's so um exciting and invigorating to connect with so many people in so many places mm -hmm. it's super interesting right to to visit you know, like I, I love going to all these little villages in like Northern England or like oh, yeah. you know, in, in Germany or wherever, like there's, there's, there are beautiful places in the world and, and kind people with open hearts everywhere. So that's the plus side. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and getting to, you know, and people being open to, to what I'm doing, which is mm -hmm. very lovely. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah so that the, and there's magic that happens in a in a theater space with people it's 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 beautiful or any kind of space with people you know with people, with people. <laughs> yeah. oh people i miss you <laughs> um yeah so uh but it's hard also like i love it it's like for me i find it like such all the things you said like such a rich experience and like you meet so many people in such a brief period of time and people are so generous especially yeah. i don't know yeah like with in little festivals and places where it's like a lot of community mm -hmm. um community led like yeah volunteers and and all of that kind of thing and then like mm -hmm. being with other musicians musicians but it's also like so exhausting and yeah. i imagine like if you're doing that all the time and internationally and and that it can that you could like burn out at some point you know? yeah i mean that's the flip side right it's, mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's exhausting and um yeah i would sort of come back from every tour both elated and like needing to stare at the wall for a week and like something new wrong with my body <laughs> and, like, right yeah. so it's, it's like uh, you really push yourself yeah yeah so it's it's all so like, how were you able to like heal from from all of these things that were happening to you mm -hmm. what was your what happened well i mean um i guess for the ear stuff like it was a, a matter of emotional healing and, and sort mm -hmm. of respecting what what it meant which was that you know loud sound for any long period was exhausting for me i had to yeah so i i mean um i i stopped touring i i didn't even try to make you know records for a while i was invited um to be an artistic uh like a, an artist in residence with echo women's choir in toronto um yeah. and uh uh which is a community-based choir and um so the the directors of that alan gosser and, and becca whitla kind of took me in mentored me in the in um uh you know arranging conducting composing for a, a group of a, cor a choral group of women and and this group of women <laughs> were very kind of nurturing and lovely and 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 welcoming and s soaking it up so it was it was an, it was yeah it was like this very safe place to kind of explore something else and to not mm -hmm. be you know, and to be committed to something for a year, which turned into two years. And Amazing. Um, yeah, it was, uh, that was a lovely experience. So, so that was very grounding. And uh, yeah, and just to have like that, that community around you. And also, were you in Toronto for, I'm assuming for all of that time, so you weren't touring. So that probably yeah. hadn't happened for you in a while to spend yeah. time like in your city. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, mm -hmm. I was very grounded here, though we were, my, my partner and I, and and then our daughter were going to Europe by yearly. So that was the only Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe you can tell me a little bit about your connection with Uruguay. Mm -hmm. Because that's become a big part of your music as well. Yeah, absolutely. So how um, did that how did that come to be? Yeah, well, um I I met my my partner, my wife in uh 
in Montreal and um, uh, we, she, she's from Uruguay. And mm -hmm. um, so we, well, you know, we joked that our third date was like meeting up in Buenos Aires and then taking the ferry across to, nice. to, uh, to Uruguay and spending- That's a good third day. date. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> solid. Yeah, yeah, it worked, it worked. <laughs> Um, so, uh, and immediately, um, you know, one of her best friends, uh, was this, was this guy, Fernando Rosa, who, um, is known, known down there mostly for his work with Ed Club de Toby as a, as a violinist in this, um, kind of poppy string quartet. Okay. But he's, um, he's also like very passionate about tango, which is also a music of Uruguay. It's, um right across the river from um right from buenos aires so or from argentina so it's this, it's a very similar culture um and uh and also he was you know he was into you know rock and roll and punk and 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 also composing like more classical music arranging for the philharmonic orchestra down there and stuff so anyway we hit it off right away jammed all the time um and then in 2012, I got him to play on a, on a record, uh, Bandanion, on, on a couple of songs on the album Rise. And uh, then eventually we did some shows together and he started introducing me to his extended musical community. Um, and I started learning more and more about tango. In 2018, um, I got a grant to go down there uh, and work with him more closely on these embryonic ideas that have become this new album that's out now. Amazing. Yeah. So you've been kind of working on this for the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Amazing. So well, how do you like incorporate these ideas, uh, like musical ideas that come from tango or that come from another country and another culture? Like how do you work that in with your own music in a way that's like, I guess like respectful or that doesn't feel like appropriation to you? That's something we always talk about because so many of the artists that we interview are, are using the influences from different countries and that they might not be from. So it's always interesting to hear yeah, what people think about that. It's an important question. Um, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's something that um, takes time to, to build trust and, mm -hmm. um, and to be open to whatever it is that, you know, that, culture you're <laughs> you're engaged with is wanting to share yeah um yeah and i you know and to you know if you know i'm like born with speaking english with this yeah. color skin, so i'm i'm gonna have some things to to unlearn you know mm -hmm. some some humbleness to practice and um i, I think um yeah so if someone does offer you know uh um, a critique or a or a different way of understanding things to to be open to that is like you know the, the practice <laughs> to to really listen you know um, for mm -hmm. example like I was um, I you know when I was writing my grant application for <laughs> to go work on with Fernando I was like talking about the roots of tango as um, you know it. it uh, you know, it was many cultures coming together in the Port Barrios in in um, in that region, Rio de la Plata, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yeah, I mean, I I was sort of seeing it as a celebration, right? <laughs> it's a celebratory yeah. thing, and both my partner and and Fernando. Uh, as well, we're like, whoa, it's not celebratory. Tango is not celebratory music. It's, uh, you know, Fernando was like, this, it's pathos. Tango is pathos. It's yeah. a hardship. It's expressing the hardship. It's, uh, you know, it's expressing broken hearts. It's expressing um, uh, missing the, the family and the country that you're never going to see again because you're cut off from them and you know um, all these like really intense feelings it's not a celebration mm -hmm. it's like a cathartic release it's something else you know it was like the rock and roll of the 30s and 40s or like the blues yes yeah, mm -hmm. yeah very similar in a way so um so yeah and that 
you know, and being open to hearing that was mm -hmm. very liberating for me and kind of shot me into this direction of like, well, what if, <laughs> um, you know, we, I sing about things that are unresolved and dive into painful things and not try mm -hmm. to resolve it and tie it up in a bow at the end of the song mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just let it be that expression. So that, um, which, which is something that definitely has come into this new album that I'm putting into out. This album. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I also saw I, you really recently released a uh, single walls and I saw the video and it's so cool because you're <clears throat> collaborating with uh, Denise Fujiwara, which is incredible to have. Yeah, I love, I just love to see dance, like, in any, it, it, collaborating with music. Um, it's so wonderful. Can you tell me a little bit about how you began collaborating uh, with her? Because she's such a, she's such a force. Yeah, she, she is. Um, well, she was doing a piece, um, I think it was in 2018 as well, yes. Um, called uh, Moving Parts. And it was, um, you know, she had her wonderful dancers, but then she had a whole choir of people singing um, pop songs. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it was, it, uh, that was sort of, and, and I um, somehow got in there as a section lead for, for one Somehow. <laughs> somehow I got there. <laughs> I, mean, I was involved in Echo at the time and I was doing choral stuff and um, yeah, I, cool. yeah. Uh, my, my friend um, told me about it and I went for it. Um, so uh, yeah, so that, uh, that was sort of an aha moment. And then when we were sort of conceiving of the making of this video mm -hmm. for Walls, um, yeah, I, I just, I wanted it. I wanted there to be a dance at the end of the premise uh, was, you know, that was created by Carlos Coronado, the director was, you know, this woman walking through, you know, our empty pandemic landscape seeking connection. And then I, I you know, I wanted there to be a dance that happened at the end. And um, so I, you know, I, I wrote to Denise and, not thinking that she would say yes, but <laughs> but just checking it out anyway, you know, mm -hmm. one of those moments of like, well, if I don't, it's definitely not going to happen. You got to just put it out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she was into it. She, it was, yeah, she, she was great. She, she, she said, yes, she'd never done a music video. She thought she'd try it. Um, and then she cast all these like superstar Toronto contemporary dancers and, uh, that's the thing is like, well, there's a dance at the end, but there's also like movement throughout it. Like to me, there's, it's like, there's dance throughout it. I don't know. It's like, you know, it's not like this full choreography, but you see all of these different artists. It's very cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They kind yeah. of peek in there and then, uh, yeah. Bryn Jennings is the, is the main character who holds it all together. She, she is fantastic so when you were writing that song like were you thinking about the pandemic because it's like well like the theme seems to really fit like what did it happen before or or during yeah no i i wrote the song before the pandemic uh i with uh amy katz uh we it was a co-write um i i mean it was that sort of the meaning was kind of ambiguous to me at the time i didn't really Mm -hmm. necessarily have a like a fixed definition of what it was about it was a whole bunch right. of things floating around um and then you know and then with the pandemic um and the you know and the sort of awakening that happened last june um uh you know all, all those things you know Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're in the lyrics somehow you know it was like a premonition or something like it's yeah it was already there yeah you know, that we've that we're that we've been trying to deal with and all of a sudden there's mm -hmm. language for it now which is good um so yeah so it you know and then the video happened in the midst of the pandemic and we were just like okay this makes sense this we let's talk about it in this context and um yeah so it, yeah i encourage everybody to check out the video it's it's really cool and it's yeah it just like feels very of the moment it's really it just feels relevant and yeah it's great 
Um, do you think um, you could tell us a little bit more about just the making of the album and sort of like if there if there's like a general uh, like message? And then also maybe I'm curious just like how people uh, in Uruguay react to, to um, the music where you incorporate tango in your own sort of way. Like, have you, have you gotten a reaction like from people? I asked this as a person that does flamenco just because yeah. it's such a traditional, it can, it can be such a traditional art form. And, and there are like lots of artists doing very contemporary things with it. But I always want to, I'm always curious to know what the traditionalists sort of think about what all these like other people from other countries and stuff are doing with their art form. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do they think? And generally, I feel like it's pretty good react. It's like, I mean, it depends on the person. But I'm curious if you if you had the chance to to share it and and get any feedback. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit, right? Like, I, <laughs> um, the, there's one song uh, that I wrote for this album where mm -hmm. I basically took everything that I had that I felt like I I understood about tango, and and tried to make a song with with that and and life of course yeah. and uh and um uh and i sent it to fernando not no like not presuming it was a tango right and he and he wrote back immediately you know, we're all on whatsapp and he wrote back it's with tango and i'm like yeah. yes <laughs> hey i did it so That's that wonderful. was a good moment um we're in the middle of like working on a video for that now and um there are two tango dancers in Uruguay who are going to dance. Um, ah, so there. cool. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, the 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 guy who's organizing it down there said, you know, it was very musical and <laughs> like it, it sounds, it sounds, sounds positive so far, but uh, we'll wait to see what happens when the record comes out, I guess. <laughs> but so well, far, it's like, I mean, I'm sure it sounds like you've spent a lot of time there and like put a lot of thought into it into how you're doing it. So I'm sure it'll be yeah, good. There's a lot of love in there, so. <laughs> Would you be willing to play us a, a little something? Sure, yeah, I will. Um, that would be so wonderful. <laughs> thank you. And thanks for like bringing us into your home oh. over the internet. It's, it's <laughs> really, especially here in Toronto right now, we're so uh, shut down. I don't know, people like are coming on here from different parts of the world, but here in Toronto, we can't do anything or go anywhere. We're in full lockdown. So honestly, it's so nice to see like a face of somebody that like I haven't ever talked to before. <laughs> like somebody new. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. It's nice for me too. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Our uh, pleasure. So I'll play this new new song that for which there is a new video that is a massive collaboration with a whole lot of people, including like. Yeah. Fernando's orchestral arrangement, which I am without right now, obviously. Right. They're not here. I will, I, will, I will miss it, but yeah, go check it out <laughs> afterwards. Um, this is called Walls. <clears throat> Before the sky turns into walls, can we watch the dusk fall? Purple light on the snow I know you made the call I know you made the call And I'm happy, I'm happy I know you made the call And I'm happy with it all dream last night there were holes in the walls filled with other people's stuff couldn't keep track of it all I know you keep it up I know I know I know you keep it up I know that you do
lights an open palm and the branches keep us calm we don't leave today but when we do we won't be gone when we do we won't be gone and i'm happy i'm happy i don't know what's going on but i've been happy all along so beautiful it's like haunting it really is even though it's like about yeah yeah like there's these like positive messages and this like beauty to it but it's also just like it gives me like goosebumps yeah it's so beautiful i can't wait to hear the whole album so when is that happening when can we all hear all of it all of it is coming out um yeah march 26th um, yeah, March 26th. And I'm, I'm going to release another single uh, in February 1st. Um, Does it have a video? Yeah, there'll, just... be, there'll be, oh, a, okay. there'll be a, an animated lyric video. Um, okay, cool. That, uh, Carlos and Jimena, my partner, have been, have been working on. So uh, it's very cool. I, I can't wait. And it also uh, goes, sort of shows another tangent that the album has, which is a lot of gypsy jazz influence. So oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> I love uh, that. <laughs> yeah, so that's so the whole album is is March twenty sixth, and um, wonderful. And where where can people find it and find you? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, you can go to my website, which is annabellemusic dot com. Um, there's a pre order there now. As of today, it's up. Um, you can pre order the whole album. Um, uh, you know, in various formats. Uh, obviously, it's on all streaming sites. Um, I, yeah. Uh, yeah so um yeah so it's uh, uh pre-orderable there too i think or pre-save pre-save with spotify and all those things so yeah that's all happening. Nice. amazing yeah and you can also find we'll have links to all of your stuff on um uh, on fabcollab.ca we'll put all everything that we have of yours so in case people so people can find their way to you um Thank you so much. I this has been really wonderful. Uh, like learning about your music and hearing you play, it was, it's such a gift. And it's especially yeah, when we're all stuck at home and this is this is the way you know. Obviously, we want to be together and and enjoy live performance, but this is the next best thing. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and we can't thank wait you. to hear the album. It's been lovely to talk to you, and yeah, thank you so much for having me. And uh, hi, yeah, everybody I, out I, there. I, I, I see you. Hey, Desi. <laughs> yeah, wave to your friends. <laughs> I'm just going to say a couple other quick things. So next week, we're going to be back here. We're, we have a special surprise guest next Wednesday at noon. And please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Fab Collab live um yeah and thanks so much annabelle and everybody who's in toronto get outside and enjoy the sunshine and everybody everywhere else i hope it's sunny there too thank you so much for joining us at curtain call bye bye, -bye. <laughs>